We are back, mga kaguro. Welcome back po sa Gurung Pinoy. And of course, tonight we begin our discussion for the final coaching for our June 2022 licensure exam for teachers. Again, we would like to welcome back the members of Team Piaché. If you are still not a member of Team Piaché, there's so many advantages to becoming a member of Team Piaché. So again, just send us a message to our Facebook page. That's Gurung Pinoy. If you are a member, you can answer our quizzes. You can watch the full-length video. You can download a PowerPoint presentation. And of course, we have our free pre-board and free final coaching. So again, just send us a message if you'd want to become a member of Team Piaget. Now, tonight's discussion is centered on general education. Again, this is final coaching day one for June 2022 licensure exam for teachers. And of course, our questions tonight are all based on the previous licensure exam for teachers. Now, so March 2022, some of the questions are also coming from January 2022. But before anything else, of course, let's all have our opening prayer. We thank you for this new day, Lord. Help us to embrace all that it may hold for us, to hear the bird song and have the melodies in our hearts, to see the sunrise and create beauty with our hands, to touch the leaves that grow afresh, and allow your love to touch our hearts, to smell the fragrance of the flowers and breathe in the wonder of your creation, to dwell on the beauty of our world and study and fathom your miracles, to enjoy the conversations we have and the lessons we go to. May we drink in all the goodness you have for us. Amen. All right, so once again, as I've mentioned, this is General Education Final Coaching Day 1 for June Lab 2022. Now, if you are ready, please do like our video, like, love, and of course, napaka-importante that you are sharing our video, okay? The like and love button are just there near your comment box. And of course, please do share our video. Lahat po nang nagsishare, siguradong papasa. Now, you can also support us by sending us stars on Facebook and also by sending us super chat, super stickers on YouTube. Again, please to like, love, and share this video, we are going to start in a few minutes. Mag-like na po kayo at mag-love ng ating video. And of course, share our video and napaka-importante din that you support us, continue supporting Guru Pinoy. You can send us stars on Facebook Live and also on YouTube as we do our discussion, okay? Again, please do like, love, share this video. General education, we start with... Question number one. Okay, number one. A sea is a great body of salty water smaller than an ocean, more or less landlocked, which is a large part of the ocean or sea partly enclosed by land. Is it letter A, lake, letter B, gulf, letter C, canal, or letter D, strait? Okay, what's your answer for question number one? Okay, which one do you think is our best choice? Question number one, this is uh, po pwede siyang parte ng social studies, no? yung mga anong lupa, anong tubig. Po pwede din naman siyang uh, parte ng science. Okay, so what do you think is the right choice for question number one? Okay, please put that in our comment box. Mag-comment po. And again, napaka-importante that you share our video, like our video, love our video. And of course, you'd also like to welcome our newbies, lahat ng newbies natin, yung Team Thunders, and of course, members ng Team Piaché. Okay, yung mga magtitake na, no, in this um, coming let, uh, ng June 2022. Of course, welcome back. And uh, dalangin natin makapasa tayong lahat. Okay, so going back to question number one, a sea is a great body of salty water smaller than an ocean, more or less landlocked, which is a large part of the ocean or sea partly enclosed by land. Is it letter A, lake, letter B, gulf, letter C, canal, or letter D, strait? Now, um, the correct choice that we have here is letter B, Golf. Okay, so letter B, golf is our choice. Let's take a look at our slides. Okay, so ano nga ba yung golf? No? So a part of the ocean that mostly is surrounded by land. Example here would be your Gulf of Mexico. So nandyan po sa ating um, question, no? large part of the ocean or sea partly enclosed by land. Kaya yung ating choice 
is choice B, part of the ocean that mostly or partly surrounded by land. Okay, so Gulf is your choice. Now, what about the rest of the choices that you had? Letter A, when you say lake, of course, this is a big body of water surrounded by land. No? So when you say lake, it is completely landlocked. Landlocked siya na sa, napapalibutan siya entirely ng land. Okay, so that cannot be your choice because partly lang yung sabi ng inyong question kanina sa number one. Letter C, when you say canal, this is a waterway that is artificial, so it's not natural. And this is constructed to allow the passage of boats or ships inland or to convey water for irrigation. Your example for this one right here, of course, is the Suez Canal, Panama Canal. Okay, so those are your canals. Kahit yung canal sa, sa inyong irrigasyon, no? so canal din siya, it is artificial. It's not something that's natural. And for your choice D... You have a strait. When you say strait, it's a narrow passage of water. And it's very important for you to know that this narrow passage of water connects two seas. Okay, so merong kang dalawang sea at merong nagko-connect sa kanila na narrow lang maliit, maliit, makipot na passage of water. And so you'd call that your strait. Example for this would be your strait of Malacca. Okay, but for number one, your choice is letter B, that's Gulf. Okay, we go to number two. This is science. Insulin deficiency or resistance of the pancreas leads to letter A, tuberculosis, letter B, hypertension, letter C, cardiac disorder, or letter D, diabetes mellitus. Okay, what do you think is the correct choice for number two? Number two, what's your choice? If you have a deficiency for insulin, okay, your pancreas has resistance. Okay, so this leads to which type of disease? Is it TB, tuberculosis, colored or black and white? Hypertension, your high blood pressure. Letter C, cardiac disorder, nagkakaproblema ka sa puso, no? sumasakit yung dibdib mo. Or letter D, diabetes mellitus. Okay, which one is your choice for number two? Okay, let's check your choice. All right, now going back to the question that we have here, insulin deficiency or resistance of the pancreas leads to correct choice, of course, is letter D, that's diabetes mellitus. Okay, so diabetes mellitus po. Diabetes, no, Pas, pagka may deficiency ka, wala kang insulin, or sometimes uh, yung, yung pancreas mo is inactive, your pancreas has has some defects, and so hindi niya nakokontrol yung blood sugar level. When you say insulin, this is a hormone which is created by your pancreas, specifically in the eyelets of your hands in your pancreas. And uh, your insulin here would control the blood sugar level. No? So yung glucose mo, blood sugar level is controlled. Of course, if you have deficiency of this, your pancreas is inactive or deficient, then... Oh, you'll, you'll have diabetes, okay? So diabetes. What are some symptoms of diabetes? Palagi kang inaantok, palagi kang um, thirsty, no? So palagi kang gusto uminom ng tubig. Pag meron kang, pag meron kang sugat, matagal mag -heal. At kung ikaw ay um, sweaty, no? Yung sweat mo ay malagkit. So these are some common symptoms of diabetes. So check mo. Okay, pag meron ko ng mga symptoms na ganyan, maaaring meron kang diabetes. Okay, not TB, of course. TB is one type of a lung disorder, lung disease, no? A hypertension, of course, high blood pressure if uh, clogged na yung arteries mo. And so your blood vessels are clogged, no? Your your blood vessels are clogged. And so your heart is going to pump harder para matransport yung blood, no? That's hypertension, high blood pressure. Cardiac disorder, of course, these are any any sickness of the heart, okay? But we are not looking for any of these three. The correct choice is letter D, diabetes, okay? Pagligwak, move on. All right, number three, the following table summarize or summarizes a scores of section A in the recent periodic test in chemistry. Now, meron kang scores dito at meron kang frequency, no? Hindi ko siya maayos. Uh, kahit na anong gawin ko sa quizzes, hindi siya naayos, no? So you have your frequency here. For the scores of... Excuse me. 
scores of 94 to 97, there's two students in your frequency mo dalawa. 90 to 93, six students got the score. 86 to 89, four students. And you have 82 to 85, 13. 78 to 81, three students. 74 to 77, three students. Now you have 70 to 73, six students. Now the question is, what is the median score interval? Is it letter A, 82 to 85? Letter B, 90 to 93? Letter C, 86 to 89? Or letter D, 78 to 91? Okay, you have three minutes to compute this or to solve this. What do you think is the correct choice for number three? Okay, number three, what's your choice? Okay. Ano kaya ang compact na choice for question number three? Sumakit ba ang inyong ulo sa question number three? Or kayang-kaya, nakita nyo ba kung ano yung ating tumpak na choice for number three? Okay, so again, for question number three, we are given a table with the scores and the frequency. Okay, so when you say frequency here, these are the number of students who got these scores, okay? Now, the question is, what is the median score interval? Now, if you know, uh, if you are talking about the, the measures of central tendency, you have three different things there. Now, you have your mean, which is the average. You have your median, which is the middle most score. And you have the mode, the most frequently occurring score. No? Meron, tayong, uh, meron na tayong a video on that in, in one of our playlists. Okay, So again, if this is the first time that you're watching us, there's so many videos that we have on YouTube. No? So napakarami na po natin videos, almost 400 videos. There's Prof. Ed, Gen Ed, mar marami na iba't 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 ibang video that can help you pass the list. Now, the question it, what, it dito is, what is a median score? What's the median score? Now, again, when you know, um, when you're thinking about the median, that's the middle most score. Now, what you do is, if you are given the different list of scores and the list of scores, what you do is you arrange them from smallest to highest and you get the middle most score. That would be your median. Now, uh, this is very easy to do if you have odd number of scores. Pag uh, meron ka namang even number of scores, kunwari apat yung scores mo, you actually do not have any median kasi apat na sila, wala kang middle most score. So what you do is you get the average of the two middle most scores. Now here, you are given the different scores, the 94 to 97, 90, 90 to 93, and so on. Now as you can see, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven na uh, scores, okay, na range ng scores na binigay. And so, we can easily just get the middle, okay, the middle most here would be these scores, okay, so 82 to 85, kasi meron kang three at the bottom, and you also have three on top. So that means 82 to 85 would be your median score interval. And so letter A, 82 to 85 would be your choice, okay? So letter A po, ang ating tumpak na choice. Kung nagkamali, move on lang. Okay lang po yan. At least sa actual na let, alam niyo na kung ano yung magiging uh, choice ninyo, no? anong magiging answer ninyo. Okay, so number three, that's letter A. Number four, which of the following is a heterotroph? Is it letter A, grasshopper, letter B, moss, letter C, fern, or letter D, algae? Okay, so this is a question in science. You are being asked for a heterotroph. Okay, so ano yung choice mo dito? Grasshopper, moss, fern, or algae? Please put your answer in the comment box. Ano po yung ating choice for question number four? Now again, if you are not a member of Team Piaché, napuputol po yung ating video dyan sa YouTube at dyan sa Facebook. If you'd want to watch a full-length video, of course, please do become a member of Team Piaché. 
The membership is valid until September of this year. And again, you can download the, the PowerPoint presentation, the Hatton PowerPoint presentation na meron tayo sa Team Pichay. Yung videos natin will just still be there. Hindi po nabubura yung videos natin na full length. Of course, the, the PDF files na yung PowerPoint presentation natin, you can easily download if you want to have it printed. You can also have it printed. Okay, number four. What's your choice? Question number four, going back to number four here, which of the following is a heterotroph? Letter A, grasshopper. Letter B, moss. Letter C, fern. Or letter D, algae. And ang pack na choice natin, of course, would be your grasshopper. Let's take a look at the differences between your autotroph and your heterotroph. Now, another term for your autotroph is the term producers. Okay, so when you say producers, they can make their own food. And of course, we call this process photosynthesis. For plants and for some other organisms, you'd call this chemosynthesis. Okay, so examples of your autotrophs would be plants, some bacteria, and some algae. Now, for your heterotroph, hetero, of course, means many, no? So another term for this would be consumers. We get our food from many sources. They eat other organisms to get proteins and energy. We cannot make our own food, no? So we are not autotrophs. Examples for this would be your animals, most bacteria, and fungi. And so going back to the different um, choices that you have here, moss and ferns are examples of plants. And of course, algae is also autotrophic. No, it's also an autotroph. And so letter A lamang yung ating choice. So heterotroph, animals are heterotroph and grasshopper, of course, is an example of an animal, okay? It's an, an example of your insect. And so letter A is tumpak for number four. Number five, artistic tradition that depicts subjective themes which appeal in various ways to the artistic viewers, participants is letter A, impressionistic, letter B, romantic, letter C, classic, or letter D, realistic. Okay, so this is, uh, po pwede siyang under ng social studies or social science. Po pwede din naman siyang under ng arts, no? So if you are going to look at the competencies that you have in the lab, so Gen Ed, you have the five major subjects, math, English, science, social science, Filipino, but sometimes meron din silang nilalagay na art, no? Sometimes meron pang TLE, okay? So you have to be prepared for whatever um, gen ed questions you might see in the lab. Okay, so going back to number five, artistic tradition that depicts subjective themes which appeal in various ways to the artistic viewers or participants is letter A, impressionistic, letter B, romantic, letter C, classic, or letter D, realistic. What's your choice? Okay. Samut sare ang inyong sagot. All right. And the correct choice for question number five is letter B. That's romantic. Let's take a look at our explanation. Romanticism is a movement in the arts and literature emphasizing inspiration, subjectivity. No? So you have subjective themes. That means depende sa, sa inyong artist, sa subjectivity and the primacy of the individual. So individualized yung inyong uh, nagiging obra if you are talking about romanticism or romantic. Okay, now what about the rest of your choices? Impressionism is characterized by relatively small, thin, yet visible brush strokes, open, uh, open composition, emphasis on accurate depiction of light in its changing quality. So if you are using impressionism, uh, usually brush strokes yung pinapakita, no? so very thin brush strokes. This is impressionistic. Letter C, classic. Classical art refers to artworks created during the classical period. So generally, you are talking about your ancient Greeks and Romans. So Luma, Luma, no, yung classic. And as for realism or realistic, it is characterized by everyday subjects painted from everyday life in a naturalistic way. So usually still life, yung mga um, flowers, plutas, no, kung ano nangyayari in, in everyday life, in real life. Okay, so kaya siya tinawag na realistic. But for number five, we were looking for, we were looking for letter B, romantic. 
Okay, so pag nakita yung question na to, subjective, your hint would be the term is subjective and your answer be romantic. All right, we move on with number six. Okay, this is a very common question sa um, reading comprehension in English. Read the paragraph and answer the statement that follows. Our extended family temporarily accommodated aunts, uncles, or cousins who had important matters to settle in the city. There were always close relatives who needed shelter and food and willing to help in the household chores. Close relatives in an extended family are provided food and accommodation and in turn help in the household activities, making the relationship blend. Is this letter A, dependency, letter B, reciprocal, letter C, friendly, or letter D, civil? Okay, so again, as I've mentioned, this is a very common question in reading comprehension. Okay, ano kaya ang tumpak na choice for question number six? All right, so very common, no, kapag ka, uh, especially kapag ka yung bahay mo nasa syudad at meron ka mga visitors, meron ka mga relatives na galing sa probinsya, they would come to your house, they would stay there, they would, uh, you would give them food, of course, accommodation, papatulugin. And in turn, okay, your most important terms here would be the terms in turn. They would be helping in your household activities. And so the correct choice here is reciprocal. No? So it's a give and take relationship. You provide them with food, with accommodation. They don't need to rent, no? Na mag pa, um, mag, mag uh, hotel pa, no? For them to be able to finish whatever whatever transactions they have. But in turn, dapat itubutulong sila, no? So naguhugas ang pinggan or whatever. Or sometimes, nandadala sila ng mga kakanin, mga pagkain, gulay, galing sa probinsya. And so, reciprocal po yung ating hinahanap. Not dependency, not friendly, not just civil. No? Pag civil kasi wala, parang acquaintance lang kayo. It's a deeper relationship and we all know this is true reciprocal is what we are looking for so it's a give and take relationship okay so letter b for number six number seven anong paraan ng paglalahad ng datos ang tatlong sunod-sunod na tuldok upang ipakitang may bahagi na hindi isinama sa sinipi letter a abstract letter b synopsis letter c ellipsis or letter d synthesis okay so number seven is part of filipino Okay, so again, lumabas po ito sa June, uh, not, so not June, January and March na LEP. Okay, which one do you think is the tumpak na choice for question number seven? Pag meron kang tatlong sunod-sunod na tuldok at ipinapakita dito na meron kang inomit, no? meron kang nileave out sa, sa quotation or meron kang kinuha, hindi hindi uh, in-include sa iyong quote. Okay, so ano ang tawag natin sa paglalahad ng datos na ito? Okay, and the back na choice, of course, your number seven is letter C, that's ellipsis. Now, if you are going to look at the rest of your choices, abstract, synopsis, synthesis, they would all just mean the same thing. Summary, no? Summary lamang sila. Abstract is a summary in research. Synopsis, of course, is also a summary. Summary of a reading. Synthesis, ganun din, no? So parang sinamarize mo lang, synthesize mo siya. You created something new out of the reading, no? So, but here, ellipsis is your tumpak na choice. So, kunwari, meron kang ganito pangungusap sa tindahan, kumuha ako ng bigas, harina, gatas, dat, 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 ng lahat ng bagay. Okay? So, that means meron kang mga inumit dito, meron kang mga nileave out, meron kang iba pang bagay na hindi mo na sinabi. No? So, uh, this one, uh, you call this your ellipsis. Letter C is back for number seven. Number eight. Math, your favorite. A cube has a volume of 64 cubic meters. What are its dimensions? Letter A, 4 cubic meters by 4 cubic meters by 4 cubic meters. Letter B, 16 by 2 by 2 cubic meters. Letter C, 16 by 2 by 2 cubic meters. Or letter D, 8 
cubic meters by 8 cubic meters by 1 cubic meters. Okay, which one do you think is ang tumpak na choice for number 8? Okay, please put your answer in our comment box. Which one do you think is tumpak? Okay, going back to the question that we have here. Okay, so sabi niya, a cube has a volume of 64 cubic meters. Alam naman ninyo, pag sinabi mong cube and you want to get its volume, that's just going to be length times width times height. And when you say cube, pare-parehas lang po yung kanyang sides, di ba? So uh, pare-parehas lang yung measurements sa kanyang sides. So that means dapat e pare-parehas yung number sa inyong i-multiply no so dapat eh 64 yung maging um, answer once you have multiplied those three numbers now as you can see b and c here are the same no so the same lamang yung mga numbers na meron tayo sa b and c and so x na itong b and c natin wag po kayong magtataka kung ganyan no marami pong ganyan sa left marami pong wrong spelling marami pong um, typo no typo mistakes sa sa left now, uh, although letter D would also give you 64, it would not um, satisfy the, the characteristics of your cube. Kasi in cube mo dapat may pare-parehas na, na faces na na sides. And so yung answer mo dito would of course be letter A. So 4 times 4, that's 16. Times 4, that is going to give you 64. Okay, so letter A is your tumpak na choice for number 8. Okay, number 9. Through the galleon trade from 1565 to 1815, the Philippines has extended contacts with, this is also a very common question in the lab, in social science. Letter A, Spain. Letter B, Spice Islands. Letter C, China. Or letter D, Mexico. Okay, one minute. Alam na alam nyo na to dapat. Okay, so for number nine, of course, ang tumpak na choice here would be letter D, Mexico. Okay, so particularly Acapulco in Mexico. Okay, so galleon trade was uh, between the Philippines, of course, and Acapulco in Mexico. So letter D is tumpak for number nine. Let's move on with question number 10. An organism that is capable of undergoing metamorphosis is classified under which phylum? Letter A, Annelida. Letter B, Mollusca. Letter C, Nematoda. Or letter D, Arthropoda. Okay, so this is science. What's your choice? Question number 10. Okay, an organism that is capable of undergoing metamorphosis classified under which phylum? Under which group of organisms, group of animals? Annelids, mollusca, nematoda, or arthropoda? 
Okay, correct choice here, of course, would be letter D, that's arthropods. Okay, now, let's take a look at your metamorphosis, no, bago natin puntahan kung bakit arthropods ang ating uh, correct choice. Now, remember, when you say metamorphosis, this is just um, an elegant term, no? This is just uh, another term for the life cycle of your insects. Okay, so life cycle ng inyong insecto. There are two types of metamorphosis. Your complete metamorphosis with four different stages. So this right here, right side of your screen, that's your complete metamorphosis. And incomplete metamorphosis, it only have three different stages. Okay, so sa incomplete mo, you only have ENA. Okay, so egg, nymph, and adult. Incomplete metamorphosis. Usually sa ipis, ito po yung nangyayari. No? So egg, nymph, and adult. In your complete metamorphosis, what you have would be the stages that um, are are represented by the terms or by, by the acronym ELPA. Okay, so ELPA naman sa inyong complete metamorphosis. Egg, larva, pupa, and adult. Okay, so egg, larva, pupa, and adult. That's your complete metamorphosis. Now, these are the members of your phylum arthropoda. Okay, so as we have mentioned, your, your organisms that would undergo metamorphosis, metamorphosis is a life cycle of your insects. And so your answer would be arthrop arthropoda or arthropods because this is a phylum for your insects. No? So ito yung mga insecto mo, yung iba-ibang insecto mo nandito sa phylum arthropoda. They are characterized by having jointed appendages. No? So may mga joints yung kanilang paa. And of course, they have three body parts, the head, the the thorax, no, and the abdomen. Now, um, another thing that you have to remember about your phylum arthropods is that they, or it is the phylum with the most number of species, no? So pag meron kayong question sa let na, which among the following phylum or phyla has the most number of species? Pinakamaraming membro ng species. Your answer would be phylum arthropoda. Napakarami po ng uh, membro, no? kahit yung mga lobster mo, crabs mo, your spiders, they are all part, hindi lamang yung insects mo sa arthropods. Okay? So, your choice there would be arth arthropoda. Now, what about the rest of your choices? When you say anelida, these are your segmented worms. These are worms with segments. As you all know, Lahat ng parte na to, kada parte, kada part ng inyong worm na to, these are called segments. And they would uh, reproduce through a process that we call segmentation. So, napuputol, no? Yung isang segment po pwedeng maputol at po pwedeng mag-give rise to a new organism. So, to a new organism. So, that would be your phylum anilida, segmented worms. Now, your phylum mollusca, these are soft-bodied animals that usually have an internal or external shell. Examples for this would be your clam, your snail, your uh, squid, nandito din, octopus, then dyan din siya, no? So, although walang, walang outer shell yung squid mo, yung octopus mo, yung shell nila can actually be found inside yung tinatawag mong pen, yung kinukuha mo pag kinain mo yung, yung lukos, no? Ano ba yung puset, okay? Sa... sa uh, Filipino, okay? So this is mollusca. Soft-bodied animals usually have internal or external shell. And lastly, you have your nematoda. This is another type of worm, but this is your round worm. Okay? So round worm naman siya, hindi segmented worm. Okay? So yung segmented worm mo kanina, nakita mo anilida, no? yung nematodes mo would be round worms. So examples would be ascaris, pinworms, hookworms, uh, your trichina worms. So ito yung mga nakikita mo lumalabas sa aso minsan. Okay, so ascaris, uh, kahit sa tao, no, meron din ganito. So nematodes are your roundworms. But of course, we're looking for arthropods, arthropoda. Number 11, gitling, ang bantas na ginagamit sa pagitan ng panlaping ika at patlang. Letter A, panghalit. Letter B, tambilang. Letter C, pananalita. Or letter D, pangalan. What's your choice for 11? Question 11. Okay, ano po yung ating choice for question number 11?
Okay, gitling ang bantas na ginagamit sa pagitan ng panlaping ika at ika gitling or dash or hyphen at ano? Ika panghalip. You all know panghalip is pronoun. No? So ika siya. Ika sila. Ganun ba? Ika tambilang. Pambilang. Ika, ika sampo. No? Ika bente. Kalima. Uh, ika at pananalita. Ika at pangalan. No? So what do you think is a correct choice? Your choice of course is tambilang. No? So ika uh, labing isa ng Mayo, for example, ikasyam ng Mayo ang ating eleksyon. No? So, letter B po ang ating tumpak na choice for number 11. Number 12, what is a cellular metabolic process that transforms biochemical energy into ATP? Letter A, cellular breakdown. Letter B, cellular reaction. Letter C, cellular metabolism. Or letter D, cellular respiration. What is the term we are looking for? What's the process of breaking down your biochemical energy energy and turning it into ATP. Okay, this is science. What's your choice for number 12? Okay, what do you think is a correct choice for number 12? What are we looking for? Okay, the correct choice, of course, here would be cellular respiration. Okay, so yan po yung ating hinahanap, no? The term is cellular respiration. Your biochemical energy, actually what you are talking about here would be glucose. Sugar is turned into ATP. ATP is adenosine triphosphate. Okay, so this is the energy that is found in the cell. Let's take a look at your slide. Um, now, these two very important processes, cell respiration or cellular respiration and photosynthesis are actually very important because these two give us energy. Okay, so una una photosynthesis, you, you all know that only plants and certain types of bacteria of algae can perform photosynthesis, your autotrophs. Now, this would happen in the chloroplast. Okay, so yan yung tawag sa parte ng plant cell mo where photosynthesis would happen. Okay, so light energy here is converted and of course uh, with the use of the reactants carbon dioxide and water which are also very important components, no? very important reactants of photosynthesis, they are uh, uh, converted into glucose. Ito yung glucose mo, yung sugar, C6H12O6 and oxygen gas. Okay. Now on the other hand, mitochondria is the part of the cell in both plants and animals where cellular respiration would happen. And as you can see, kung ano yung naging produkto ng inyong photosynthesis, ganon yung gagamitin ng inyong cellular respiration okay, to produce ATP. Ito yung nahanap natin, chemical energy in the form of ATP. So yung produkto ng photosynthesis mo, na glucose and oxygen, will be used by the mitochondria in a process which you call cellular respiration to make carbon dioxide and water, which would still be used again by your, your chloroplast. So cycle silang dalawa. No? So we'd always say photosynthesis and cellular respiration are complementary processes. One cannot live without the other. One cannot happen without the other. So no? cycle. Kasi kung ano yung produkto ng isa, gagawing reactant ng isa. Okay? So aside from just creating carbon dioxide and water for your cellular respiration, it would also create ATP. Napaka-importante because this is the energy that is used by the cell. Okay, so that's why sometimes you'll, you'll hear the term uh, that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. No? Powerhouse of the cell siya kasi dyan ginagawa yung energy. Okay, so para siyang meralko. Dyan yung ginagawa yung energy in the form of ATP. Okay, so cellular respiration is a tumpak na choice. That's letter D. All right, now we go to number 13. The very hot gas of nuclei and electrons is called letter A, magma, letter B, mitochondria, letter C, bioluminescence, or letter D, plasma. Okay, what's your choice for number 13?
Okay, so what do you call the very hot gas of nuclei and electrons? Okay, a lot of your answering letter D, plasma. And plasma, of course, ang ating tumpak na choice for number 13. Okay, magma is that hot material underneath the surface of the earth. No? So, pag uh, nag-explode nag yung vulkan mo, uh, magma yung lumalabas, no? lava and magma. Okay, so... Again, ang um, um, magma mo, that's the hot, one of the hot, hot materials coming from the surface of the earth. Now, your mitochondria, again, we've mentioned, mitochondria mo is the powerhouse of the cell. Diyan yung nangyayari yung cellular respiration. Okay? Now, bioluminescence, this is one characteristic of some, some materials, some substances, kung saan ay umiilaw sila. No? So, examples for this would be your jellyfish. They are bioluminescent. Your your alitap tap, no, your firefly. They are bioluminescent. Okay, so that's not what we are looking for. The correct choice, of course, would be letter D plasma. Okay, so letter D plasma. Now you have to remember the difference between magma and lava. Magma would still be inside the earth, no, so under the earth. Now once it is already thrown outside, it's already flowing outside. You'd call that lava. Okay, so lava na puyan. Okay, next one, number 14, is a math question. A 10-meter board leans against the wall. The foot of the board is 8 meters from the wall. How far up the wall does the board reach? Is it letter A, 8 meters, letter B, 6 meters, letter C, 4 meters, or letter D, 10 meters? Okay, you have three minutes to try to answer this question. Ano kaya ang tumbak na choice? Okay, what do you think is the correct choice for question 14? All right, now going back to question 14, meron kang 10 meter board. So that's the length of your board, no? And it leans against the wall. Then there's, uh, the, the foot of the board is 8 meters from the wall. So the distance from the wall of the foot of the board is 8 meters. Now the question is, how far up the wall does the board reach? Okay, now, of course, um, if you are going to plot this, if you are going to draw this, this is your your board, no? Although stairs that yata to or ladder yata to nakita ko, no? So just imagine that this is your board. It's 10 meters in length. And of course, the distance between the wall and the foot of the board is 8 meters, okay? Now, as you can see, we are actually forming a triangle and we are missing one side. And this is the side that we are looking for because the question is how far up the wall does a board reach? So from the ground until the top part of the wall, gaano ka kataas na yun na, na reach niya na parte ng wall so we have actually formed a triangle so obviously we will be using your pythagorean theorem to answer the question so again you have c squared equals a squared plus b squared c here of course that's your hypotenuse the longest side of your triangle and a and b here are the two other sides so a uh, can be eight meters or even b can be your eight meters so it does not really matter and we are looking for the other side and so say we equate this as 10 squared no so 10 meters squared equals 8 squared a natin is 8 and we are looking for b squared no so we get the squares of these numbers here 
10 times 10 is 100. 8 times 8, because that's the meaning of 8 squared, that's 64. Okay, and so we are going to try to isolate b squared here by moving 64 to the other side and our equation will become 100 minus 64 equals b squared now 100 minus 64 would give us 36 and for us to get the value of b we get the square root of that answer so b equals the square root of 36 saan ang galing yung 36 36 came from 100 minus 64 at bakit kinuha natin yung square root because we are given b squared here. No? So what we do is we get the square root of both sides para ma-isolate natin yung ating variable. We, we're sim simply looking for b, no? not b squared. And so the square root of 36 is 6, 6 meters. Hence, the correct choice is letter b, 6 meters for number 14. Okay, so again, you can just easily download this presentation later. No? You don't need to copy anything. The download nyo po ito, um, no need for you to take any screenshots. Okay, so letter B6 po ang ating tumpak na choice. Number 15, the Filipina stage actress who won the international awards or international awards is letter A, Leia Salonga, letter B, Nora Honor, letter C, Isa Siguera, or letter D, Lisa Makuha. What's your choice for question 15? This is very easy. You should know this. Sinong Filipina, your hint there is the term stage actress who won international awards. Okay, Lea Salonga, Nora Honor, Isa Siguera, Lisa Makuha, of course, ang tumpak na choice would be letter A, Lea or Lea or Lea Salonga. No, although some um, foreigners would pronounce this as Lea Salonga. Okay, so not Nora Honor. Nora Honor was a film actress. No, saying she's a stage actress. Um, Isa Siguera, hindi naman, no? So, a singer, mostly si Isa Siguera, and child actress. Lisa Makuha was a ballerina. It still is a ballerina. Okay, so this is Tita Lea Salonga, and she actually has won the EGOT, no? Yung EGOT, these are the four major awards in Hollywood, no? So, nakapag... Um, uh, win na siya ng Emmy Awards, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony Awards. Okay, so this is a designation given to people who have won all four of those awards. Respectively, these awards honor outstanding achievements in television, recording, film, and theater. Achieving the EGOT has been referred to as the Grand Slam of, sh of show business. Okay, so may pagmamalaki talaga si Tita Lea Salonga. No? So um, Pinoy pride talaga siya. Okay, number 16. Which of the following is a product of 13 and an integer? Letter A, uh, 1,326. Letter B, 1,323. Letter C, one, uh, 131. Or letter D, 1,343. Okay, what's your choice for question 16? All right, question number 16, what is our choice? Okay, so again, for number 16, this is a math question, and you are asked for the product of 13 and an integer. So, so makatawid, we are looking for a multiple of 13, okay? Now, uh, your correct choice here is letter A, no? So that's 1,326. If you are going to look at the divisibility rule of 13, it states that a number is divisible by 13 when the ones place digit of a number is multiplied by 4 and the product is added to the rest of the number either gives 0 or a multiple of 13. So that means pag yung 6, no, the ones digit, you multiply this by 4, you'll get 24. Okay, so you'll get 24 there. And if you add this, if you, you add that to the rest of the number, it would give you 0 or a multiple of 13. So if you add 24, so 24, that's 6 
times 4. Your 1's digit multiplied by 4. Then you add that to the rest of the numbers, 132 plus 24. That will give you 156. So that part is divisible din siya by 13. So if you divide 156 by 13, that of course would give you a, a quotient of what? Of 1, of 12. No? So 15 divided by 13 would be 1. Then you have a remainder of 2. 26 divided by 13 is 2. So 12 yung magiging answer mo. So that means letter A po ay tumpa. Kahit na tingnan mo na nga lamang na yung, yung inyong uh, number sa letter A, 13, of course, the first number that's divisible by 13, 26 also divisible by 13. Okay, so 1,326 would be your tumpak na choice for number 16. Okay, number 17. Math Olet. The grades in mathematics of the students are as follows. 80, 75, 60, 95, 100. What is the range of their group? Uh, okay, so this is math, but it's very easy. You're simply asked for the formula for range. Is it letter A, 95 minus 80? Letter B, 95 minus 60? Letter C, 100 minus 70? Or letter D, 100 minus 60? Okay, which one do you think is tumpak for number 17? Okay, of course, when you are taking the range, you're, when you're solving for the range, you simply subtract the lowest score from the highest score. And so the correct choice here, of course, should be letter D. You know? So highest score is 100 minus the lowest score, which is 60. So 100 minus 60 is tumpak for number 17, letter D. Number 18, what is the least common multiple of 12 and 60? Letter A, 140. Letter B, 340. Letter C, 360. Or letter D, 120. Okay, least common multiple. LCM. Again, you hint natin, if you are looking for the LCM, the, the least common multiple, you start with the smallest um, among your choices. Okay, so i-check mo muna yung smallest number mo among your choices. Pag tumpak na yung smallest choice mo, then that would be your uh, correct choice. Okay, because you're looking for your least common multiple. Kahit na meron pang ibang tumpak dyan, multiple din siya ng 12 and 60, pag hindi siya yung smallest na choice mo, that cannot be your answer. Okay, so least common multiple of 12 and 60 Looking at the different choices that you have here, you have 140, 340, 360, 120. And of course, yung pinakamababa sa ating mga choices would be 120. So ito yung unang-una mong iti-check because you are looking for least common multiple. Kabalik taran po if you are asked for the GCF, the no, greatest common factor. So you check whether... Uh, you'll get a whole number when you divide 120 by 12. No? So 120 divided by 12, of course, that will give you 10. 120 divided by 60, that will give you 2. So both of them are whole numbers. And so letter D is to back. No? So that's your least common multiple for 12 and 60. Okay, number 19. The vermiform appendix is part of the large intestine but has no digestive function. Thus, it is blank. Letter A, embryonic structure. Letter B, analogous organ. Letter C, heterogeneous organ. Or letter D, vestigial structure. Okay, which term are we looking for? Number 19. This is science. Okay, what do you think is tumpak for number 19?
Okay, going back to the question that we have here, vermiform appendix is part of the large intestine, but has no digestive function. Thus, it is, letter A, embryonic structure, letter B, analogous organ, letter C, heterogeneous organ, or letter D, vestigial structure. And ang partner choice, of course, is letter D, no, vestigial structures are those structures in our bodies that have already lost their function. Okay, so let's take a look at your uh, explanation here. Vestigial organs are the organs that have no apparent function and are the residual. Residual na lang sila. No? So, kumbaga, e remnants na lang yung mga natira na lamang ng parts from the past ancestors. So, example for this would be our appendix. Another example would be our wisdom tooth. No? So, uh, the pelvic bones of your whales. These are examples of your vestigial organs. Now, for your embryonic structure, these are the anatomi anatomical parts that make up an organism in the early stages of development. No? So, pati siya ng organism, anatomy, pati ng, ng katawan ng inyong organism in the early parts of development. So, when uh, embryo pa lamang yung inyong organism. Analogous organs or analogous structures are similar structures that evolve in two living organisms and they have evolved independently. So, that means wala silang common ancestors. So some examples of your analogous organs are those organs that play the same roles, the same functions in different types of organisms. But if you try to look at their structure, hindi magkakaparehas. For example, ang wing ng bat mo, ang wing ng butterfly mo, ang wing ng um, chicken mo. No? So hindi pare-parehas yung structures nila or wings ng birds mo, but they all play the same function. But um, if you are looking at their ancestors, wala silang ancestors na the same. Now, there's no term na heterogeneous. Uh, wala po, no? When you say heterogeneous, hindi magkakaparehas. Yung term dapat dito would be um, homologous, no? homologous organ as opposed to your analogous organ. When you say homologous organ kasi or homologous structures, ito naman yung mga structures sa inyong organisms that by virtue is very similar. Meron silang uh, ancestor ma na magkapareha, so meron silang common ancestor, but they do not play different uh, they do not play the same function now no? so hindi na sila the same yung function magka salungat sila ng analogous yung inyong homologous homologous and analogous analogous the same function but hindi parehas ng ancestor hindi parehas yung pinagmulan homologous structures naman parehas yung kanilang pinagmulan but now in modern day they do not play the same function so examples for this would be the limbs uh, yung paa at kamay ng inyong dogs yung paa at uh, kamay ng inyong monkey, yung paa, yung paa natin, no? So hindi pare-parehas yung yung role, yung 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 function. Okay? But uh, essentially, if you try to to check the bone structure and kung saan sila nanggaling, no, in their evolution, parehas sila ng pinagmulan. Even the wings of birds, no? So parehas din yung bone structures nila pare-parehas, pero hindi na parehas yung role nila in modern day. That's homologous. Okay, kabalik na siya ng analogous. Alright, now last question for tonight. Anong uri ng sanaysay ang pagkaraniwan ang paksa at waring nakikipag-usap lamang? Uh, waring nakikipag-usap lamang. Letter A, masining. Letter B, maanyo. Letter C, malikain. Or letter D, malaya. Okay, what's your choice? Filipino. Uri ng sanaysay na pangkaraniwan ang paksa. No? So, hindi siya matalinghaga, hindi siya retorikal, pangkariniwan lamang yung paksa, at pa, para nakikipag-usap lamang. Okay, which one do you think is tumpak for question number 20? Last question for tonight's final coaching gen ed part 1 for June 2022. Okay, tumpak na choice here, of course, pangkaraniwan ang paksa. Para nakikipag-usap lamang, we are looking for malaya. Okay, if you if you are looking at the rest of your choices here, masining, maanyo, malikain, would all mean the same thing, di ba? Masining, malikain, maanyo siya, no? maraming arte. Pero yung malaya ay malaya lamang, no? So pangkaraniwan ang paksa, wala masyadong forma, wala masyadong matatalinghagang pananalita. And so this is what we are looking for. Letter D is tumpak for number 20. 
And that ends tonight's discussion. And of course, we will be back tomorrow for final coaching part one for professional education. We will be posting the video, of course, at 7 p.m. This is a pre-recorded video, actually. No, so tonight's video is actually not live. I have pre-recorded this because if you are watching this, I only have a few days until I give birth to my son. Okay, so the rest of the final coaching videos would all be pre-recorded. But of course, they'll all be posted at 7 p.m. Okay, so always at 7 p.m. This has been Coach Mek of Gurung Pinoy. And of course, I leave you the saying, malit man na buti lang mga kaalaman. Ang dulo nito ay malaking kaginawaan. Maraming salamat and good night, mga kaguro. Bye!